Good morning, folks. Um, <coughs> this doesn't say Elasticsearch. So if you're here for a talk about Elasticsearch, you've come to the wrong camp. Uh, my name is Mark Conroy. Uh, someone, whoever, most people Elasticsearch has, has cancelled or couldn't make it, so I'm fitting in instead. Uh, this is a presentation I gave a number of months ago in Cork, in Ireland. Um, based on our use of Pattern Lab and our uh, disregard, let's say, for Photoshop and InVision and Sketch and other uh, data mock-up creators. Um, so the, the, the presentation won't be as polished as I might like it because I was asked last night after quite a number of drinks <laughs> <laughs> if I could fill in and uh, I'm, I'm filling in. <laughs> okay, so my name, as I said, is Mark Conroy. I'm a lead front end developer with Anatech. Uh, we're Ireland's leading Drupal agency, recently we won Irish web, web agency of the year, which is nice. Um, we build mostly websites for government and non-profit organizations. We're starting to do some for profit clients now, but most of our, of our, our work historically has been uh, non-profits and government. What we're going to look at today then is um, uh, the idea of using Photoshop or the idea of stopping using Photoshop for designing websites. Um, then the idea of using something else for designing websites instead of Photoshop. And I don't mean something else, I don't mean Envision, I don't mean Sketch, I don't mean anything like that. Um, and then looking at the benefits of that and why that, why, why, why that can allow us to um, have projects that, God forbid, come in on time and come in on budget maybe even under budget. Uh, sometimes web agencies make a profit rather than just breaking even. Uh, and we're, we're, we'll look at that for a little bit as well. So um, I'm going to guess this sounds familiar to lots and lots and lots of people. The client signs off on a designer. Yeah. And then you build a website. And it's based on these designs. And then you look at it again and think, ah, oh, it's quite like the designs. It's, 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 to my mind, it's, it's the exact same as the designs, but it's not exactly like the designs. It's not what we call pixel perfect. You got a design, and the design were uh, 960 pixels wide. And the CEO of the company looks at it eventually, and his monitor is uh, 800 pixels wide. He's still using IE6, and it's not exactly like the designs. So we, we don't get the pixel perfectness uh, of what we're looking for. And that's not your fault. You've done your best job. You've got the designs and you built the spec uh, and the website according to what the design said. Does that, that's not your fault. That is not exactly like the designs anymore. But at the same time, it's not the client's fault. All the client did was signed off on designs and said, these are designs I want. Is that too hard to ask for? No, it's not. So what went wrong? Something went wrong. Something is to blame. Okay, the client now has a website that they're fairly happy with. You've got a website that you built and you're fairly happy with. And it probably went over time, it probably went over budget, and nobody's happy enough, but everyone is fairly happy. So the problem we are discovering more and more is uh, often with content. That you get a design for a, a news listing page. And every single news item on that news listing page has a title called Lorem Ipsum Dollar Set Amos. Five words. The longest word has five letters. We 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 find it's a it's a local government uh, agency. There's five words in the name of that department. The day their website goes live, when they say the name of their department launches a new website, they've got nine words. Not five, they got nine. So this goes on to two lines, not one line. Now this has nothing to design because it's gone to two lines, and you as a developer or as a front-end developer, obviously it goes on to two lines. We've got more words. But it doesn't want the two lines to design, so you can't make it smaller. Sure, yeah, we, we reduce the font. Then they get a 25 word, because you know, local government agencies, the Minister for Health and Finance and whatever else he is, meets with the local person for charities and something else, something else to discuss, and that's the headline. We, we were one headline was 25 words long. Okay, we can reduce the font size, no problem. And then we got two pixel fonts. <laughs> and our websites are WCAG, uh, AA 2.0, whatever it is, you know. Uh, two pixel fonts, don't cut that. <laughs> Next problem is, the designs are static. They're just 
I'm sure, yeah, there's this SMC there. They're, they're, they're just photographs. They are not websites. They are an approximation of what your website might look like. So this is one version of one uh, rendering of your page. And what I've designed is exactly, or what I've built is exactly the designs with a different rendering, with different content, with a different aspect ratio, with a different width, whatever it is. Um, the designs are basically completed in what I call my most hated design tool, that's Photoshop. I don't, I, I don't consider it a design tool. I think the name <laughs> says it. It's for manipulating photographs, not websites. A website is not a photograph. If you want to get a website and take a screenshot and manipulate that, be my guest. Use, use Photoshop, no problem. Um, don't come near me, please, with a, with a Photoshop design and tell me this is what we use to design. Ooh, I got a shock. <laughs> this is what we use to design websites. So this is a, this is a screenshot. I don't know, this is, this is, a, this is a, an image we created for a blog post we, we wrote about uh, Design Wars, it was called, it was a, a series of posts. But each of those Photoshop layers that you can see there, each of those is from uh, a Photoshop document that we received from a client. So I've got a layer there called Subheading 2. That's probably inside Group 15. So why is Subheading 2 in Group 15 not the same as uh, Heading 6 in Group 11? Just a different colour. I don't know, what, 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 what is subheading 2? I've got a layer called dot, capital letters, D-O-C-1. I don't know where to start, I really don't. This is, this is the bullshit that we have to deal with day in, day out, when someone comes to us with Photoshop. So, like I said, it's a great tool. It is a fantastic tool. Well done, Adobe. You, 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 you've got something brilliant there, and you've got a product, and you can make lots of money on it. It's brilliant for editing photographs. It is terrible. If I was less polite, I would say it is shit <laughs> for designing websites. But I'm glad I'm polite, so I wouldn't dare use that language. In 2017, if your designer is using Photoshop, I think you hired the wrong designer. If they're still using Photoshop, except for manipulating photographs, You've hired the wrong designer. One of our uh, competitor agencies, uh, and we're, we're very good friends, we, 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 we like them a lot, they like us a lot. Uh, at the end of the session, I asked, what do you do if you have designers who use Photoshop and only use Photoshop for design? And my answer was very simple, you fire them. That's what you do. If these people are clever enough to understand how to use something as complex as Photoshop, they can write a little bit of HTML. It's not that hard. If they want an image on the left, they don't have to drag this thing and drag it across on Photoshop and have it on the left. They can write uh, 10 characters, float left. That's nine characters. <laughs> There's a colon in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> um, browsers render fonts differently. Again, we're another local agency, or a local government agency that we're working with at the moment. Um, they can't understand why they have a font and it is a size 72 and it's bold. And on Photoshop it looks whatever way it looks, the signed off designs, let's say. On Chrome it looks a little bit different, because Chrome renders fonts different than Photoshop does. On Firefox it looks a little bit different. Their CEO uses Windows, it's a little bit different again. So there are these changes and these, these discrepancies that we just cannot account for. We, 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 we can't say enough, it's not our fault how Firefox renders a font. It's not our fault how uh, Chrome renders a font, and it's not our fault that your designers use Photoshop. Um, so if you, if you want to make a minor change then in Photoshop, you, you, you want to change something small, like say for example, um, a button. We don't like the background color on the button, it's green. We'd rather if it, if, if it was a, a yellow. <coughs> well, I've got 46, and again another, <laughs> we're trying to have 46 desktop designs in Photoshop. You want to change that button, you've got to go through 46 Photoshop files. And God knows how many uh, groups and layers inside those you get, get down to to get the buttons to change all the buttons. If you use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you go to your dot button class and you say background yellow. That sounds better to me. So, it's not responsive. You, 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 like I said, I, I received, and I mean literally, 46 desktop designs. More than 50% of our clients are on mobile. And they tell us, we want mobile first. 
and they gave me 46 desktop designs and six mobile designs and zero tablet designs. So what I have now is, I know exactly what it's going to look like on a desktop at 700 pixels. Not 900 pixels, not at 1200 pixels, not at 1701 pixels. At 1700 pixels only, that's what I know what it's going to look like. And that's what the CEO knows it's going to look like. I also know what it's going to look like at 320 pixels. So that's nice. Somewhere between 320 pixels and 1700 pixels, I haven't got a clue. So where we have a grid of three items and three items and three items, I'm guessing on a tablet we have two and it'll be a bit wider. But I don't know. So the client gets the designs, or gets, gets their website back and says, this doesn't look like designs. You're not fucking right, it doesn't look like designs. <laughs> <laughs> You're on a tablet and you give me no tablet designs. What, what, what do you want to do? You know? But, but on mobile, it, it, it's, it's got one column. Grand, okay, we'll make it one column. Now you've got an 800 pixel wide image, and it's, it's, it's a 1500 pixels high. Could have designed that in the browser, you would have seen exactly what it was going to look like very, very quickly. So, with Photoshop we have, um, I should stop saying Photoshop, but static mockups. We have one version of one page of the website at one specific viewport, and that is it. We don't have the responsiveness, we don't know what's going to happen when, 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 when um, when someone's on an iPhone, when someone's on a Galaxy, when someone's on a tablet, when someone's on a desktop. We also don't see what's going to happen when uh, you're... you're um, I've lost my train of thought, so I'll go to the next slide. Okay. This is a disaster. This is a total disaster. This is, this is one of our own websites we designed. So the, the design isn't a disaster. The disaster is clients zoom out. You get a, a Photoshop file and you zoom out and out and out, so you can see the whole page, you can see the header, and you can see the footer and the sidebars, everything in one go. That's not how people look at websites. That is not how people look at websites. You, you look at that, I'm guessing. Can anyone read one word on that? No. Or you, 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 you hand over the designs, and you go to the big client briefing meeting, and everyone's going to be really happy, and we're going to all chest pump each other all day long, <laughs> and they have it printed on an A4 piece of paper. You know. Is, is that how people look at websites? No, it's not. So, you, you, you can zoom out. You, you need to have at least have that 100%. So you can see, okay, when I load this website, this is how much of the screen I'm going to see. I'm going to see the header. I'm going to see the hero slider that shouldn't be there in the first place. Um, but the marketing department decides we, we need to have it. Uh, so our second most important piece of content, we'll see that in slide number two where no one will see it. Uh, but you, you need to be able to see these things, things probably. You, you, you can't be zoom, zooming out. Um, when you use static mockups, it's too easy to have bonkers ideas. Here's three examples, and each of these examples, gospel truth. These are, these are things I've been asked for, uh, not as part of Amatech, I will say, but uh, for, for when, when I'm as, at home and with kind of small local clients. Uh, so it says, <laughs> when you click on one of my products, or when you click on, you know, say for example, we, we, we work with say Oxfam and, and other big charities in Ireland. Um, and they might have a campaign about the war in Syria, and when you click on Syria, it would open up a light box that gives you information from Wikipedia about Syria. Um, I wanted to do that, but it has to look like our branding. We, we couldn't have someone thinking that we actually use Wikipedia's content. Yeah, that's fine in Photoshop, no problem at all. We take a screenshot, we stick an overlay onto it, and we do some stuff, and yeah, we get Wikipedia articles looking like uh, uh, whatever client's branding. There's a website in Ireland called Done Deal. It's basically um, uh, eBay. Really, really popular for selling cars, selling, um, basically selling everything. Uh, I have a client, he sells stoves. And he tells me, um, I don't like the look of our stoves on Done Deal. What can you do about it? Take a different photograph, I suppose. Uh, add something else to it. No, 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 it's the colours. I don't like the brown background. Can you change that? I don't own Done Deal. <coughs> but look at, look at the brown. Brown doesn't fit in with our branding. Can you, can you make that the same color as our branding? And can we um, have the images? And no amount of talking to him would let him know that I don't own eBay where you're trying to set your stoves. But on Photoshop, that's not a problem. Yeah, sure, I can take that website and make it look any way, any way, way you want. Um, <laughs> My job done here. <laughs> we spend a week, and this is funny, 
But, you know, you, you're, you're paying developers whatever it is, a thousand euros or something a week. Uh, we spent a week doing gradients on images. The client wants the image that is in color, because their images are in color, and you upload the image, and we strip out the color. And after we strip out the color, we add some alpha transparency for contrast. And after we do that, we add a gradient that's one color at the top. After 24%, it's a different color-ish, and at 73% another color. On top of that, then, there's a different gradient that goes from the bottom up. And on top of that, there's another gradient that has, I don't know what it is. We spent a full week, literally one full week doing this. Then we see an email from the designers. We didn't design the website. A lot of our work is, is building the website that somebody else has designed. An email from the designers to the client to tell them, we don't think this is possible in code. But the client says, that's the design that we signed off on. We've got the bill. So we spent a week doing it. Nearly got it done. The designers actually said to them, why don't you just upload the original image? Then it'll be exactly like it is in designs. And then the client decides, eventually, do you know what would be nice? If we had none of those glares on it, none of those gradients on it, none of the alpha transparency, none of the black and white, just have a normal image. It's much more vibrant. So after spending a week doing this, uh, they decided, no. So, you know, these kind of bonkers ideas that, that these lens flares that pop out and glow and do stuff, they, they're, they're simple in Photoshop, or at least achievable in Photoshop. But we're dealing with what has to get rendered, which is CSS, HTML, JavaScript. And uh, that's more tricky then. So what's better? Well, SketchUp is better. I'm not going to go into SketchUp much. I actually love SketchUp. I think it's, I think it's great. It's really good for designing user interfaces. It's really good for doing things quickly. It's really good for kind of... Uh, talking to a back end or to say, here's the kind of fields we want to need. It's good for talking to a front end or saying, here's the general approach to layout that we're, we're, we're going to use. Um, but ultimately, it fails because, again, once you're finished designing, you're sending this image off to a client. Well, they're just going to uh, look at exactly what you've, you've, you've done in Photoshop. It's a specific image of a specific page at a specific viewpoint, and it, it, it has all the problems then that we, we have with uh, responsiveness and whatnot. So, um, I have no idea why I have this slide up. This is a task timer, it's called. It's, it's our in-house uh, uh, timer uh, app for, our, for whatever task we're working on. Anthony built it. I made it look, I'll say, pretty. Yeah. <laughs> I made it look like this, let's say. Uh, I use SketchUp once very quickly just to, to, uh, to put it together. Like I say, I have no idea why the slide is here, so I'll move on again. Um, but I will say it'd be like Clark. Does anyone know who Clark is? Clark is the CEO. He's the owner of Envision. <laughs> Anthony, <laughs> my thoughts on Envision are. <laughs> I'm not a fan of it. So I had a tweet. I, you know, you turn it on Envision, and, and again, this is loading 46 Photoshop files in Envision. It could take me five minutes. And it has this lovely thing saying, loading your experience. I mean, yeah, you're going to load a shit experience for me. So I said that on Twitter. And Clark, the, the CEO of, of, of Envision, he said, unfortunately, you're correct, sir. I'm all over it. Expect significant improvement soon. So I have an interview with, with the, the team making Envision next week um, to tell them. I think they want to talk about how we can make it better. Um, but <laughs> uh, yeah, Clark recently did a shit product. So the solution that we need is design in the browser or at least design for the browser. Um, back in the early days of the web, there was this old technology called HTML. A little bit later, a little thing came along called CSS. And a little bit later, we had this thing called JavaScript. Can you imagine that if we're going to hand over a website eventually to our clients in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, we design the damn thing in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and we give them a prototype of what they're going to receive eventually. We don't give them an approximation. We don't give them a, 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 a specific viewport. We give them the exact product they're going to receive just with dummy content. So what we do is we send them a URL. We do our designs, we, we use Pattern Lab or we, whatever uh, uh, generator we use. We tell the client, here's your designs. It's called markconroy.amertech.com. And that URL will be forevermore your style guide. Um, here's an approach to doing that. So we do some discovery. We go meet our clients. We ask them what they want. Um, we do some research. So rather than just asking the client what you want and they tell us all the things they want, then we go and talk to the actual users and say, if you were to use this website, what would you want? And then we do some rapid prototyping. So we get our pens and papers and we draw different sketches and little T's and that's, that's fine and it's very, very quick and we can throw them out very quickly and easily and they're dispensable.
They might do some more rapid prototyping in something like Balsamic or Sketch App. Now, we don't sort of find these things. We, 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 we do these very, very quickly ourselves in house, just to say, if we were to have um, a slider here, or if we were to have a listing page like this, how much work is that to develop? And if we were to change like this, how much less work would, 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 would it be? Um, then we, degree, we, we agree on different design components, so we know we have a home page. What are the components of a home page? We know we have a header, we know we have a footer, we know we have a listing page for news. And we agree on those design components, then we build them. And it's very simple. I'm not going to go through Pattern Lab uh, much here because uh, I, I'm guessing everyone has heard of it and, and they understand the idea of atoms, molecules, organisms, templates, and, and pages. Uh, but we, we, go, we build these out then in HTML, uh, we add the CSS, and if needed, we add JavaScript if there's some little interactivities or, or animations or something that, 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 that we need. Um, in terms of Pattern Lab and Drupal, Phase 2 have a, a great uh, version of Pattern Lab that integrates with Drupal. And you can write your front end in Pattern Lab, and the templates that you write for the Pattern Lab are the templates, since they're in Twig, that you will be using in Drupal later on. And so it, they, they can kind of match one to one. Hashtag mind blown. So we create these um, component designs in Pattern Lab, we create the templates in Drupal. We extend the templates from Drupal to use the Pattern Lab templates. So for example, we have a template in Drupal called node-teaser.html.twig. That's your, 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 your teaser view mode template. What we'll do inside that is you, you have to install the components module as well. Um, and then we'll say, this template here, you will find the file for this template here up inside the Pattern Lab folder called uh, templates called um, uh, listing page called small, something, something like that. And then we, we do one more thing inside that, then we've got the variable. So in, in Drupal, you've got the, the content variable only. What we'll do is, is, is um, we say content.field image equals uh, pattern lab dot image. And content.field body equals uh, pattern lab dot uh, Feel long text or whatever it is. So, so we, we've got the same templates in, in we've got the templates in Pattern Lab, and then in Drupal we just we, we map the different variables we want with whatever uh, variable name we used in the JSON for Pattern Lab. And then when it's complete and it's signed off, that will be your Drupal team. So your, your clients look at a Pattern Lab version that's generated of it. The exact thing they see is what you're going to hand over. And while you're building that for them, while you're, while you're designing that and showing the different components and they're signing off on them, that's the Drupal team you know, that's, that's that part signed off. So you're, you're doing your design and your, your front-end build at the same time. <coughs> so here's an example. Um, on the top we have a menu with five menu items, home, about us, our work, blog, contact. They're just five random words I put into a JSON file and pattern them. Under that you can see then you've got the, the shortcuts uh, uh, and the our stuff. Uh, that's the Drupal version. And you can see it's exactly like what's above it, except the words have changed. Because in Drupal, we're using the menu, so whatever words we have in our menu, that's the words that get put into the menu, obviously. And in Pattern Lab, we're using dummy content. So it's handy to have just those five words because they're generic enough that we can reuse them on any website. Then we go one step further, and we add in the branding block. So again, you can see that on the top, you've got Pattern Lab, and under that, you've got um, uh, the Drupal version. And you can see the logo is exactly where the logo is in Pattern Lab. The slogan is exactly where the slogan is in Pattern Lab. And the menu is in the exact same position. So again, what the client gets is what the client was, was expecting to get. <coughs> and then we go another step further. And here's a, a version of a, a Node article. Now, this is all just, just random um, demo stuff. It, it looks quite ugly, but it's, it's good enough for the presentation. Um, and again, we've got the title of the article in, in, in uh, Pattern Lab. And in Drupal, it's called, say, female. We've got an image that was us winning the Web Awards uh, a while back. Before one night. Very good. <laughs> um, and then you've got the, the, the same image with the same dimensions in, in terms of the width. But we haven't skewed it. We haven't chopped off the kitten's head and things like, things like, like, like that. And that looks the exact same then in Drupal and, and in Battle Lab. So again, the client gets what the client expects. And here's the code. This is on the left-hand side, you've got um, it's called horizontal menu twig. So I've got two menu files, one called horizontal menu, one called uh, vertical menu. And the only reason I've got two is that it, it allows me to add in that class you can see on line 34 called menu underscore underscore horizontal. And that's only so I can have things display in line and things like that. Um, so that's, that's actually the, the menu 
HTML twin file from Drupal. I copy and paste that up into Pattern Lab so that it had the exact same markup. Um, mostly because I'm not clever enough to actually work out how macros and things of that work. So that, that kind of <laughs> solved the problem. And on the right hand side, then you've got the Drupal file. So menu hyphen hyphen main dot HTML dot twig in Drupal. All it does is says include atoms menus horizontal horizontal menu dot twig. So when you write the front end on the left left hand side, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> uh, this becomes your front end. This is this is exactly what you're going to get from Drupal anyway. And then what you have on the right hand side is the um, is just one line of code to say stop reading this file and find it up in a different file. Um, the next step then the, the branding block code here. This is this is taken from the phase two pattern of implementation. So you got your branding logo and your branding name and your branding slogan and. Uh, you got a couple of variables and one called line four has URL, one on line five called site logo, and um, there's a site slogan there on line 17. So what, what we do then is when we we're happy about HTML on the left hand side, we come to one on the right, and that's that's a block hyphen hyphen system hyphen branding hyphen block dot html dot tweet. And we'll say that this one here will include a molecule called branding dot branding dot html. That's the one on the left hand side, except the variable URL that you'll see on the left will use the Drupal path to front page for that. So we, we swap out those variables. That's what I was saying a second ago. Where that's where you will say that uh, for content dot field hyphen image or dot field image, you can swap that in, in, in there. Um, so we see that then here. This is our article content type. It has a class of article, then it's got uh, four fields article title, article image, article body, and article tags. And on the right hand side then we, we, we say use pages, content types, article.twig, and swap out the following variables. So where you see title in the left, use Drupal's uh, uh, label um, array. Where you see body on the left, use content.body and the same then with tags and uh, the image field. So it's, it's, it's quite simple that, that Drupal then just each template we need, we just tell it to find it somewhere else and uh, interchange uh, some, some variables. So why is it good? Well, what's on the left is static mockups. What's on the right is uh, design and browser type stuff. So kind of just like the background color on, on buttons, I, I explained this one here earlier on. You've got to go through every single PSD, or I think there's some ways you can import or re reuse things. But you know, whatever way it is, it's, it's more work to do this in Photoshop to, to change things. Um, if you're talking about using Pattern Lab or something, you go as, as simple as find .btn or .button class and change your background color. That's it. You do it once and it up updates. Everywhere. Um, in terms of QA, the designer on the left hand side designs the website, the developers build it, it goes to the, to the yeah, client, the client looks at it and says, yep, happy enough that I think there's a bug on whatever it is. We come back and we fix it, and it goes back to them, and there's another bit of an issue, it comes back and we fix it, and it keeps going and going and going. Um, eventually, we, we, we get sign off. What we're doing on the right hand side in terms of not using static mockups. Well, this sign-off and this QA is done upfront, so there, there, there's, there, there isn't that big long. Here's the discovery phase. Here's the wireframe phase. Here's the content phase. Here's the design phase. Here's the build phase. Here's the QA phase. QA becomes part of the part of the process rather than a, rather than an item on, on its own. Um, you get a living style guide, so our clients at any time can go to clientname.anatech.com and they can see what their website's going to look like. When they want a new feature, we can. Oh, I won't go there. I will, yeah. I'll go there now. Oh, two slides time. Oh, it's not. Ah. <laughs> uh, when they want a new feature, we, we build a new feature. They can look at it and they can say, yep, that's the feature I want. That's exactly the way I want it to look. Let's put that live. And we, we do that. But they're, they're seeing this on, 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 on an interactive prototype first. Um, the CEO you know, doesn't come along five weeks later and realize, oh, there's a problem here. You know, we, we get a new component. We can add in a backstop JS or one of those kind of regression tools and we can see Okay, here's a screenshot of the website today. Here's a screenshot of the website after we build a new feature. Has anything broken? And uh, you know, we, we can solve that now rather than realizing uh, in two months' time that something broke on the donation page, for, and, and that's, that's mission critical for charities. Uh, so the CEO doesn't have a heart attack, and everyone's happy. Is everyone happy? No one's happy? Yeah. No one's happy, okay. <laughs> Any questions? If you are given... PSD based design or a static design, um, and you have 
no choice about firing the designer because yep. the client is the designer. That's most of our work. Yeah, yeah. Um, what what do you recommend is the best way to start adapting it to work with something like that in lab? Is it really just a case of actually some poor front end soul has the pain of building something in Patent Lab and then moving forward, say, that's to exactly this? Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at, at some stage, you're going to have to write the CSS and the JavaScript. So whether, whether you're, you're, you're using Drupal files for that to get the HTML, and then, then you write your SAS and you write, you write your JavaScript, um, you might as well just do that in Pattern Lab up front. So it, it's, it's kind of all the one, whether, whether you write, write in Pattern Lab, and then you've got your front-end build, or you write it in Drupal, and you've got your front-end build, you're still going to have to write it at some stage. So yeah, if, 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 you, if you get static mockups, you basically tell the client, you want to get yourself a free uh, style guide. I would suggest uh, that pushing back on the FTs. So when they give you 50 shades of grey, knock it down to five. When you've got 16 image aspect ratios, knock it down to two. Yeah. That's a problem too, Anthony, though, because I, I, I always find with clients, uh, they're, with their best of intentions, you say to them, hey, you've got 50 shades of grey here, can we rationalise this way? Yeah, by all means, I don't know what the designer was at. We, we don't want all those things, we want the sustainable. Uh, so we knock it down to maybe 35 shades of grey, and we got 15 different font sizes because every line on, on a listing page only goes to one line for the title. So the, the designer gets to Photoshop and makes it a little bit smaller, so you got you know, 15.6 pixels uh, for this title, but you got 16.2 for this, and your base font is 16 pixels. Can we rationalize this? Yeah, by all means, that's, that's, that, that's what we want. We want something good. When you do that, then they tell you, this doesn't look like the designs now. No, uh, we, <laughs> we kind of agree that 15.7 and 16.2 are all going to be 16. Yeah, but it's not like the designs. I don't mind it being 16, but it has to be like the designs. <laughs> you know, so, so there, there is that problem that, that, that yeah, we, we, we rationalize things and we ask them to, to be saner about it, but it ends up not looking like the designs. To me, that's an education problem as much as yeah. anything else. It's a client problem if we just didn't have any clients, it'd be easier. <laughs> Uh, if you're doing this sort of process you recommend, is there any distinction you can make then between design and front end implementation? Or is it all one activity? I don't see a difference. Yeah. No. So you, um, you don't have a design phase, then you just go straight to implementation, and if it's not going yeah. to change it? Yeah, I, 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 I think if, if someone wants to be a web designer, they need to understand the web. And if you want to be a web designer, at least you should be able to write HTML. It's not hard to write P tag, it's not hard to add a class. And at least you should know the rudimentaries of CSS. It's not hard to, to, to work out float left, float right. It's not hard to work out background, um, whatever hex color or whatever it is. So yeah, I, I, I see front end and design as pretty much one of them. Not necessarily the implementation of the front end. I have no problem. I'm not a great designer, but I think I'm quite a good front end developer. Uh, and I, I wouldn't have a problem with someone sitting beside me and them using Sketch to say, Mark, this is the way I want it, and me coding at the same time. But I certainly wouldn't hand over to a client a uh, sketch file or a, a, a PSD or PDF. Yep. Yeah, or is your toilet somewhere? I have this one, a previous one. Say again, sorry? Is there a video of your talk somewhere? Because I suggest two people might you make like lots of watches. Yeah, uh, apparently everything has been recorded, all the, all the talks. N not the video, but the slides are, are, are recorded. So I presume they'll be on the people from London website soon enough. What are your thoughts on InDesign? Adobe is telling us the kind of design, like designers, okay, you want to build mockups that work in HTML using design from Adobe. Sounds like something I hate. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't, I have no idea. <laughs> I, 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 I haven't used it. Um, you know, when, when it comes to the web, I kind of like the idea that HTML, CSS, and JavaScript costs very little money. I mean, it's, it's so cheap, it's free. And I just don't see the point of paying thousands of euros to Adobe every year for, for, for inferior products, basically, because, you know, write some divs and put in some CSS, and, and there it is. Uh, the idea that we, we would... I just don't understand. I don't know why it happened. And you can understand changes in version control. Isn't that nice? 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't. I, I do understand. I, I, I think designers historically were designing for magazines and designing for billboards and things like that. And then the web came and disrupted that. And designers were too lazy to go and learn about the web. I just wanted to continue using their, their old-fashioned tools. Do you know if they are actually teaching this in the science schools these days? I have no idea, actually. Um, uh, then, like, isn't that the place you have to kind of go and say, like, look, like, you are the science of the web now, not magazines? Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure, because I know in our country there's 17 of us, and as far as I know, two people went to college to study uh, computer science. Everyone else, like, I'm, Anthony's a civil engineer, I'm a, an English teacher, uh, somebody else is a geneticist, somebody else is a, a, a Stella, but also she's an astrophysicist. Uh, we're all self-taught. So, to, to, to say that they should be teaching that in college, I, I'm guessing most people here probably are self-taught, as well as designers and, and that, you know. Uh, but yeah, they certainly should be. If, if you're doing that in college, you should be, you should do that. But at the same time, I, I guess <coughs> academics are lazy and they're not up to current standards maybe either. So um, they might see HTML, CSS, and JavaScript as programming languages rather than, well, as, yeah, yeah. rather than design languages. So the graphic design school might not teach it, but the, they might learn some of the rudimentaries in computer applications or something. Um, but yeah, they, they should be. Okay.